Okay guys, so you clicked on this video today to learn how to make your images look better. So there's going to be a few different steps that I've got in this video that are going to help you improve. Uh, they are going to take a little bit of tweaking and then you're going to have to do a little bit of practice, but they're pretty easy so and, and straightforward. So let's get straight into the video. <laughs> guys so option number one now this is going to be really straightforward I've got an image now you can find any image you want just get it off Google images I've literally just picked the image of this uh, player called Gundogan because he is having an unbelievable season I thought it'd be fitting just to improve some quality on his um, on his images so what you're gonna need to do is drop it into Photoshop and then you're gonna unlock the layer so if it's locked like it'll have this symbol just click unlock on the lock and it'll unlock then what you're going to do is go command j now you will have seen me do this in a lot of my poster designs before uh it's a very simple technique but i've just been tweaking around with it and trying to make it um more effective for the design so we're going to do that now so what you're going to do is go to filter you're going to go to other and then you're going to go down to high pass now this is a uh, really key you click high pass and not hsb sometimes i get confused but you might not so click high pass and now you're going to be presented with this now i know it doesn't make the image look great to begin with so what you're going to do is put the radius to 15 now the 15 is pretty much like the average quality that you'll need to get all the highlights out of it and uh, the shadows obviously so if we leave it on 15 we're just going to click OK um, and then it will leave us with this. Now what you need to do is go to your blending options and then once you get to your blending options you're going to go down, 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 down. Now you can use overlay, this is one that you can use. Soft light is a good one, this is one that I usually prefer to use because it doesn't make it look too strong. You can go to hard light which again increases the contrast and everything in the image and then vivid light which really blows out so vivid light really isn't a go to you're probably going to just leave that one alone so as you can see if you go down it just gets more stronger as you go pretty much so soft light is key so if I turn this on and off you can already see it's enhanced the image and made it look a lot better so once you've got your soft light you can always merge these together uh, and then you've got your image done and obviously convert it to a smart object before you um, before you start editing it and resizing it because it will lose quality if you don't that is option number one guys let's move on to option number two Okay guys, so option number two. Now this is going to be pretty simple. You're just going to need to go down to your blending options again, or your adjustment layers, sorry. And then you're going to get your levels. So once you get levels, you're going to clip and mask it to the um, to the document. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go onto the uh, blending options here and we're going to change this to multiply. Now this makes it really dark. Now this is going to be for increasing the shadow. So we're going to go to levels on the layer mask and then we're going to go command i or control i on the ma on the windows so it just basically erases the mask uh, the levels layer so we've got that now we're going to need to get a soft brush so you've got a soft brush make it fairly big so you can see it obviously and reduce the opacity down to about four percent about between four and six percent and then what you're going to do is change your color to white so you can paint back in on the levels layer and then we're going to go over to where the shadows are on the shirt and we're just going to start basically going over it to increase the actual shadows on his shirt just to make it all look a bit a bit more defined now if it doesn't look like it's doing a lot you can obviously increase the um, opacity on your brush like you can increase it to about 10 or 15 and just basically go over it again uh, but you basically what you need to do is keep going over where the shadows are meant to be just to make them more defined and once I've done this I will turn this layer on and off and you really will be able to see the difference uh, this makes but it basically just makes the image look a lot like it just it just makes it look a bit more um, defined and contrasty and it makes it stand out it makes all the uh, shirt adjustments stand out and stuff which is basically what you need so uh, yeah it's, this is a good tool to use uh, as you can see it's, it's literally just just finding the crease in the top and obviously you can do in his face here as well uh, where his shadows are on his face and basically just just defining them more nothing too too uh, hard to do here but yeah once you once you think you've done enough uh, you can basically just leave it alone so if I turn this layer on and off now you will see a change so let's turn it off let's turn it on so as you can see it's a really subtle change but once you cut this out it'll look really good so we can do this again with the highlights so we're just going to duplicate this layer clip and mask it again and then we're just going to change it to screen and we're just going to reset the mask by clicking command backspace or control backspace on the windows key um, so yeah once you've got this set up again and you change it to screen what you're going to do is just find the highlighted areas which which are bright on this shirt and you're just going to go over them with your brush 
just to make them look a bit more crisp. Now you can go, this is going to help with the t-shirt, because obviously on the sides that there aren't shadows, you can go over them. But um, obviously you don't want to ruin your shadow layers. So it's kind of finding the right balance between highlights and shadows. So you can find bits in his hair, on the edge of his hair, like stuff like that which need highlighting but it, again you don't need to go over this too much and don't worry if you get it on the background like over here because basically you're going to cut him out anyway so unless you are using the whole image but if you are cutting them out it doesn't really matter but if you are using the whole image be a bit more careful so just going to go over some little bits on the shirt here where there are highlights and then we're probably going to be done with this technique guys so nothing too special really um it's it's just gonna give you an it give you images an extra bit of quality basically so if you are interested in doing this taking the time to make your posters look better then obviously watch till the end because there will be a really important technique at the end which is using a different software so uh yeah basically stay till the end i think that's about done for this guys so we'll turn this on and off Again, you can see the highlights we've added into his hair and his face. We can also make the eyes a bit brighter if we would like, just like that. Now turn that on and off. Yeah, just looks all just all looks a bit better. And then again, merge the layers together and then convert it to a smart object. And then you've got all that in one document. Then what you would do now is just cut it out and then you move on to obviously placing it in your poster design. We are going to move on to the next technique now, which is going to be sharpening. So moving on. Okay, guys. So. I picked this image of Vardy because obviously Man City Leicester today so we're using a different images so we're gonna just unlock our background again and then we are going to go to filter and then we're gonna go down to sharpen and we're just gonna click sharpen <laughs> I know it seems really simple uh, but did you really just see how much of a difference that made to the image so if I just go off that again I'm just gonna create a new layer so I can turn it well duplicate this layer so command J to duplicate or control J um, so I'm gonna just duplicate it and then I'm gonna do it again on this layer so I can turn it on and off so you can actually see the difference so if we just do this so I've sharpened it and then if I turn it on off on it makes a hell of a difference doesn't it so if you're just doing something quick a quick design or something like that and you just want to like quickly make the image look better without having to take too much time on it that this is a great option so it, it's really going to um, save your time and let you focus on other things which I think is great but yeah obviously the sharpening tool is a really like it's a major plus because it's so easy to use like it's just two clicks and you're done so if you, where you go filter go down to sharpen and then click sharpen and then it's done so that's going to be that guys moving on to option number four Okay guys, moving on to option number four. So this is going to be using a camera or filter. Now this is, this is again, it's quite a, um, a unique little, little add-on to Photoshop. Now this is basically a mini Lightroom. So for the last option, we are going to be using Lightroom. So it's another software, but this is basically um, a easier version than Lightroom to use. So let's just go down here and we're just going to look at the exposure. So obviously you can make this darker and brighter, but really what we're here for is the quality. So contrast, you can, so just to make it look at like a nicer image. And then we can do play around the shadows, whites and blacks, but we're just going to leave that for now. We're going to go down to texture, which is obviously going to increase the texture on the face of him. You can see all the sweat on him and basically see all the texture on the shirt. And then we're going to go to clarity, which again is going to improve the image again. Now this obviously makes like all the highlights and stuff just looks brighter. All the creases in his shirt look better. And you can obviously, you can click dehaze, but it, it, it would sort of just make the... Uh, the background a bit darker just take away from it a bit and again we can increase saturation here just to make the image look a bit warmer that's going to be that for the basic slider now we're going to go down to detail now this is this is really helpful for when you get old images which are really noisy and grainy because you have these noise reductions which you can just click just to obviously get rid of all that noise but again you are going to get rid of some of the texture on the image so uh, you can do it with color as well because obviously his t-shirt is quite grainy uh, but yeah, something like that. And obviously you have the sharpening tool here. So before we use sharpen, we could only just click sharpen and it wouldn't like give us a slider to adjust it. Here you have a slider to adjust it. So having that done that now to 74, you can see it's a lot crisper than it was before. So if I reduce the noise a little bit, so it's not too harsh on the shirt to about 20, that looks really nice. So if I just show you a before and after, which is a great technique with this, 
you can see the image just looks 10 times better already. So that was just a few clicks and it's already looking 10 times better. So that's going to be that for the camera or filter phase. Obviously I have a video on camera or filter if you don't know how to use it. The link is in the description below so just go and click that and it will tell you everything you need to know about camera or filters. So moving on to the last option which is going to be in Lightroom guys. Okay guys so welcome to Lightroom. So Obviously, this is just for photo editing, this software. So all it does is enhance and dehance images. So there's no cutting and sticking and stuff like that. It's, it's completely just for image quality. So what we're going to do, if you need to add an image in, you're just going to go to Add Photos, and then it'll go to your documents, and you just find a photo and drop it in. So we've got the photo in. Now what we're going to do is come over to here on the right where it says Edit. So we're going to click this and this is going to give us a load of sliders. Now again, it looks very similar to camera or filter because camera or filter is a cutout of this. So, but this is obviously, this, this is way better. So you can make presets and stuff. So you can, once you've done this, you can keep it like, just you keep it basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to play around with the exposure. Now I'm going to put it to 0.6. Now this is really slight, nothing really too harsh. And then the main one is going to be contrast. So we're going to push this one up to about 40. Now with my preset that I have, I have it saved so that contrast is always on 40 because it, you need contrast for your images. Now highlights and shadows, you can reduce these to about 40 as well, just so we can get some more quality in the image. Whites and blacks I never touch. Now if we come down to vibrance and saturation, you can increase these a bit, um, but obviously I don't really bother with that because I do it all in Photoshop anyway, so in my camera or filter at the end of the poster. So you can mess around with this if you want, but I'm not going to touch that today. The main thing that I always do is go to the saturation down here on the oranges and I increase the saturation just because it's skin color, right? So if we increase it to about 30, you can see his skin color looks a bit warmer and a bit more like, uh, yeah, a bit saturated, obviously. Um, but it just makes the image look a bit nicer to look at. So we've got that all done. Now we're going to go down to texture down here. So texture, we're going to increase to about 40 again. Clarity can come up to about 40. Again, making the image look a lot better. Dehaze, yes. Uh, vignette, you don't really need to add in. Detail, again, see these are very similar sliders. So if you've watched my camera or tutorial, then you will know how to uh, basically, you'll know how to use this. So we're just gonna reduce the saturation a bit, sorry, because it's just making me feel a bit, yeah, okay. That's fine. Now we can go down to sharpening, obviously make the image look a lot sharper. And then we've got our noise reduction again. So we can just noise reduct again, looks really nice. Uh, and color reduct as well. So we've got all that done. This is obviously going to make your images look a lot different. Now I drop a load of images in and just chuck a preset on it. So if I just show you where to go with presets, which is down the bottom here, you'll get a load of different ones that you can just choose from. So obviously you've got all these here, uh, you've got black and white ones, which will make your images look really nice or really bad. <laughs> um, but obviously you've got to play around with it yourself. Now, most of you who have Photoshop will have Lightroom as an add-on, I, ex I expect. But obviously there are other Lightroom options that you can... Um, you can choose from on the on the internet which are basically the same so you shouldn't have no problem with it but i'll just show you my um my preset at the moment my sports one so this is all i do to it right so i have the exposure at zero contrast 40 highlights minus 40 shadows plus 40 then we have nothing on the color orange we have oh well saturation we have on 15 just on the basic one and then we go down to texture. We haven't done anything with texture, which I'm surprised with. Clarity, we've put up to 40 because clarity is really important to making the design pop. Uh, grain, we haven't added because we we do a lot of these things in camera or filter, but this is just to start off the process. Sharpening up to 15, noise reduction on 41, and that is it, guys. So we can see a before and after. Um, so it, it definitely makes the image look better, doesn't it? That has been it, guys. So hopefully you have learned something from this video. I tried to keep it as short as possible just so you guys don't get dragged down with the video, but there's a lot of different things out there that can make your images look better, and I hope you have learned some techniques. If you have any comments or questions, just let me know in the comments down below. Obviously, follow all the socials. Um, uploading, not daily, but uploading like every three days on the Instagram just to keep the content flowing. But yeah, guys, if you have any video ideas, let me know in the comments down below and I'm, I'm happy to listen to them. I reply to every comment and that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.